Welcome back, this is Rito here with another Calamity Endgame Weapon Showcase. Today we're going to be looking at one of the new developer weapons that has been added in the 1.4.4 Calamity update. It is a really awesome magic weapon called Eternity. You can see right there I use it and it doesn't do anything. At first I thought it might be bugged, but you have to have an enemy in order to see what the effect is. Also, I turned down my volume by like 50% for the sound effects because it is a loud weapon. Let's drop a super dummy over here and see what this weapon can do against it. Whoa. <laughs> this is really awesome. I've been thinking they needed some more endgame magic weapons, and this one seems just so cool. It looks like, you know, electrons flying around a molecule or something in the middle, and then it also gets that infinity sign that builds up. So let's see where the slime gets damaged as it gets close. So the slime is actually not getting damaged until it hits into this middle part. So I can click far over to the right and it will automatically attack the super dummy. I kind of want to see it in a solar eclipse with a zerg potion to see how it impacts a whole bunch of different enemies. We'll do that right after we do a DPS test. This is kind of the normal setup I use. It's a mixture of movement, defense, and damage accessories. You've got Core of Blood God, the Sponge, which has a new sprite in the 1.4.4 update. Got the Menacing Ethereal Talisman, the Community as Guardian Aegis, Celestial Ch Tracers, and Rampart of Deities. With that setup, it can do up to around 900,000 on a single target. Let's try it with an improved dummy from the Louis AFK mod. So this just kind of cycles through different bosses. And let's see what it does here. So it's doing around the same. Like, whoa. It did like a huge explosion at the end though. That was really awesome. So it's doing like 900,000 to a million and then it does the big explosion. One thing that is really cool about this, whoa, that's bugged. <laughs> it doesn't use much mana at all, which is one thing I really like about it because you can use it and hold down and then it'll explode and you haven't used any mana. I can click it a bunch, but it really doesn't do much. You really want to kind of hold down and let the full effect happen and then explode and then use it again. So you'll basically not run out of mana. So let's switch some of our accessories to more damage related ones. Like right here. I don't know if that's 100% optimized, but let's see what that does. So it bumps our damage up to like 1.3 million spike if we put more damage accessories on. But I'm going to switch back to what I normally use. Let's do a solar eclipse. This is a really interesting weapon, so I want to see how it works in like a group of enemies. So I'm just holding it, and it's repeatedly <laughs> destroyed everything. I have a zerg potion on, and it doesn't even look like there's that many enemies spawning because... I'm just holding this down and it's just killing everything. Yeah, like it's just jumping from enemy to enemy, it seems. So I'm going to use it on this Reaper. And then I'm just holding down the left click. And it's just killing everything. I do notice, though, if every enemy on the screen is dead, then it no longer does any damage. It's And you have to re-click it. So when there were no enemies, like right now I'll kill everything. And now I'm holding it down and it's not doing anything. So new enemies are on the screen. I can click it again and it will just immediately <laughs> wreck everything. I feel like this is just complete god mode as a mage. I love it. Like I said earlier, the volume on this is a bit excessive. So you'll probably need to turn the volume down for your sound effects. Otherwise, it just gets a little bit hard on the ears. Okay, let's go ahead and turn off this solar eclipse. So I like to DPS test a lot of these endgame weapons against Providence because it's just a good benchmark to see how quickly it does burst damage. So let's summon Providence here. And here we go. Pretty fast. I like it. This weapon is insanely easy to use too. I think that's one of the best things. You don't have to aim, you don't have to do anything, you just click and it just does all the work for you. And yeah, it just feels like God mode. Uh, let's try it on the Devourer of Gods. 
Wow. <laughs> that was a really fast clear. <laughs> I'm so happy about this because we're doing Magnus the Mage right now, and this is going to be probably my favorite endgame mage weapon. Like, that clear is just so impressive. So next, let's take a quick look at the crafting tree and see what this weapon requires. I love the icon for it. It looks just like the Crystal Crusher kind of color scheme or just like crystal blocks in general. I really like that. And we're gonna have to drag this over. Lots of stuff here. So the first thing you'll notice is we need Dark Plasma, which is actually a material we don't use very often. It's from the Ceaseless Void. And you need 20 of those, so I think you'll have to farm the Ceaseless Void a few times. And then we need Shadow Spec Bars, which you can craft after beating Supreme Calamitous. And Unicorn Horns, that's really easy to get. So the main part of this recipe is going to be, first of all, getting your Shadow Spec Bars and then having Subsuming Vortex. If you're doing a Mage playthrough, you've probably already acquired the Subsuming Vortex if you've defeated Supreme Calamitous, because it's a great weapon to fight her with. And then you need the Primordial Ancient, you need the Bio Fusillade, you need the Tome of Fates, and you need Seething Discharge. Once when you combine all of those with the Daedron's Forge, you'll have Eternity. Let's take a look at the recipes for each of these ingredients. I know Subsuming Vortex is going to be pretty tricky here. Um, you need the Tears of Heaven, Auric Tesla Bars, Event Horizon, and the Augur of the Elements. Auric Tesla Bars you get after defeating the Jungle Dragon Yaren, so you should have those by this point. Tears of Heaven is just a combination of the Frigid Flash Bolt, Water Bolt, and Cores of Sunlight. Frigid Flash is just the Frost Bolt, Flare Bolt, Essence of Elium, and Essence of Chaos. The next is the Event Horizon. The Event Horizon is a combination of Starfall, Nuclear Fury, Relic of Ruin, and Dark Sun Fragments. And Starfall you can get from Astrum Diaz. The Nuclear Fury is a combination of Luminite, Souls of Sight, Unicorn Horn, Razorblade Typhoon, and Poseidon. And the Augur of the Elements is the Eldridge Tome, which you get from the Slime God, Tome of Fates, which is the Meld Bars and Spell Tome. Then you need the Shadow Flame Hex Doll, which you get from the Goblin Invasion during Hard Mode. And then you have Galactica Singularities and Luminite, which you get after defeating the Moon Lord. And that is how you craft the Agur of Elements, which is the third part of the Subsuming Vortex recipe, which is just one component of the recipe for eternity. So if you catch that so far, we are going to need pretty much every magical tome in the game in order to craft this eternity weapon, which seems fitting because it is such a cool weapon. Um, then you need the Primordial Ancient, which is Primordial Earth, Forbidden Fragments, Cosmolite, and Phantoplasm. And Primordial Earth is the Death Valley Duster, Forbidden Fragments, Meteorite, and Ectoplasm. And the Death Valley Duster is the Trade Winds, Sturdy Fossil, Forbidden Fragments, and Desert Feather. And Trade Winds is just from Aerialite. Then you need the Biofusillade, which is just Eula Bloom and Spell Tome. Thank goodness. One easy part of this recipe. <laughs> and then you need the Tome of Fates, which is just Meld Bar and Spell Tome. Lastly, you need the Seething Discharge, which is just a drop from the Brimstone Elemental. So really, the main thing here is getting the Primordial Ancient and Subsuming Vortex, because those are pretty tricky. So that is how you craft the Eternity. Lots of stuff to farm up and acquire to craft it, but I think it's worth the trouble because it's such an awesome weapon. Now I think it'd be really cool to try this on the Boss Rush. So let's turn that on and see how this goes. Interesting, so it's like tracking the boss. And that was just one click and I got the Queen Bee down almost 50%. Yeah, two clicks and I was able to completely destroy the Queen Bee. I wonder how it'll do on a bunch of enemies. It's kind of taking a little while to kill the adds for the Brain of Cthulhu, but I wonder how it'll do once we start hitting the Brain of Cthulhu directly. Oh wow, that, I didn't even realize we killed Brain of Cthulhu. That was fast. And we almost killed the slime in one click. This is one of the best weapons I've ever seen. This is incredible. And the fact is, you, you don't miss your shots. You're just, like, these bosses can be running all around and you just continually do 700,000 damage, 800,000 damage to them. 
Yeah, this is going to make boss rush and farming Supreme Calamitous so easy with a mage. One thing I'm noticing is it's not letting me select which part of the boss I'm wanting to hit, which was a little bit weird with Golem, because I wanted to kill the head, but it wasn't letting me select it. There we go. Master Marius is actually the one that held up to the most damage from this weapon. A lot of these other ones are just getting completely killed. This is interesting. He's not taking much damage either. I wonder if it's because I... Yeah, I need to be focusing the attack on the head. And it's kind of hard to do that since it doesn't really let you choose. The closer I was to the head, the more I was able to get those head hits. Oh, this is going to be fast. <laughs> Ooh, and we have the new Bumblebird. Too bad it's going to die too quickly. <laughs> I love how the Bumblebird flaps its wings and stuff. I really want them to do something like that with Yarin, where he actually flaps his wings and everything. Because I feel like Yarin's a little bit too stagnant. Okay, well, I think that's a good place to end the boss rush here. I think we have shown <laughs> this weapon is absolutely crazy. Even though this does have a really long crafting recipe, I'd say it's totally worth it because it doesn't use much mana at all. You like, I don't think I've heard myself use a mana potion this whole time, even during boss rush, constantly spamming it. You just click and it pretty much does all the work for you. Cool effects, I like the visuals. I think it's a great addition from the Calamity 1.4.4 update. I will definitely be sure to pick this up at the end of Magnus the Mage. I think this will be my favorite weapon when we get to that point. Well, that concludes our showcase of the Eternity Mage weapon. It's an endgame mage weapon, probably the best in the game for most scenarios. I'm not going to say it's the best for all scenarios because I haven't tested that, but it's just overall probably going to be a go-to mage weapon for most people. I hope you have found this video informative and helpful. If you have, be sure to like and subscribe. I also do other videos, like currently I'm working on a mage-only death mode calamity playthrough, so if you're interested, be sure to check that out as well. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.